A storm shadow cruise missile fired from the Ukrainian border towards Kalino airfield outside the Russian city of Kursk will cover the 100 kilometer distance in six minutes, much faster than most Ukrainian drones, the Financial Times reports. It is the speed of the storm shadow missiles that makes them so useful. Our drones are much slower. If a Russian military helicopter or plane is about to take off, we can quickly hit the field. One of the main uses of the storm shadow is as a preventive weapon, said Roman Kostenko, who heads the Defense Committee of the Ukrainian Parliament. It is noted that Kyiv wants to be able to use long-range weapons to destroy Russian air bases and bomber fleets that carry out attacks on its territory, as well as Russian ammunition depots, troop concentrations and command centers. One problem, Western officials say, is that Russia began moving its air assets deeper into Russia about three months ago, beyond the 250-kilometer range of storm shadows and into the 300-kilometer range of ATACMS. The extra distance that Russian bomber pilots now have to fly has added an extra layer of rigidity to the Russian system, one Western official said. But the move has also reduced the effectiveness of Western weapons as there are fewer air targets within their range. Another problem, journalists say, is that the stockpiles of storm shadows and scalps are small. So even with permission for cross-border strikes, Kyiv will not be able to deploy them in large quantities against multiple Russian targets. Missiles are not a strategic panacea for Ukraine's strategic military situation, another Western official said. The third and more serious problem is that even if Biden approves the use of British and French missiles that have American components, he is unlikely to green light ATACMS for fear that Russia could escalate in response, the reporters note. If Washington holds back on its ATACMS missiles, Germany, which has so far followed the US lead in supplying weapons to Ukraine, is unlikely to change its position on supplying Kyiv with its own Taurus cruise missiles. Playing to U.S. fears of escalation, President Vladimir Putin said that the West would enter into direct conflict with Russia if it allowed Ukraine to strike Russian territory with Western missiles, a move he said would change the nature and scale of the war. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Ukraine should be able to use long-range weapons to prevent Russian strikes on civilian targets, stressing that Canada fully supports Ukraine on this issue despite Putin's threats. Experts from the Institute for the Study of War ISW have noted minor advances by Russian forces in Kursk Oblast in areas that are not fully controlled by Ukraine's defense forces. However, they have emphasized that Russian troops are likely to face greater difficulties in further attempts to counter-attack in areas still under Ukrainian control. Russian forces continue counter-attacking throughout the Ukrainian salient in Kursk Oblast on the 12th of September, but made only marginal gains likely due to continued Ukrainian offensive operations and defensive counter-attacks in the area, the ISW said. The Russian Defense Ministry reported that Russian forces have retaken 10 settlements south and southwest of Korenevo since launching counter-attacks on the night of the 10th to the 11th of September. These settlements include Apanasovko, Byakovo, Vishnevka, Viktorovka, Vnez Zapnoy, Gordivka, Krasnuktia Briskoy, Obukovka Snagost, and 10th Oktyaba. However, all of these areas fall within previously claimed limits of Russian advances, and the ISW has not visually confirmed the recapture of any settlements other than parts of Snagost and Krasnuktia Briskoy. Additional geo-located footage published on the 12th of September shows Ukrainian infantry crossing into southwestern parts into the southwestern part of Tetkino, around 40 kilometers southwest of the Ukrainian salient in Kursk Oblast. Further footage reveals Ukrainian armored vehicles and infantry bypassing Russian Dragon's Teeth anti-tank defenses near the Russian-Ukrainian border southwest of Noviput without facing resistance, suggesting that Ukrainian forces have advanced in the area and that Russian forces were not ready to use these obstacles to stop cross-border attacks. Russian sources also reported continued Ukrainian assaults near Noviput, Medvedzai, Snagost, Olgovka and Fanaseevka. Russian forces have so far advanced in areas of Kursk Oblast that Ukrainian forces were not yet fully controlling nor attempting to control and Russian forces will likely face more difficulty when counter-attacking further into areas of the salient where Ukrainian forces do have control. 
Ukrainian forces have not attempted to consolidate positions everywhere in their salient in Kursk Oblast, and it is likely that Ukrainian forces had fewer consolidated positions in forward areas at the edges of the salient where Russian forces have recently advanced. Russian counterattacks against better prepared and consolidated positions in territory where Ukrainian forces exert control will likely be far less successful than the counterattacks Russian forces launched on the 10th to 11th of September. The U.S. Department of Defense has assessed the counter-offensive actions of Russian troops in Kursk Oblast, Russia, calling them marginal. So, you know, what we have seen is Russian units beginning to try to conduct some type of counter-offensive in the Kursk region. He said that these actions are marginal, Pentagon spokesman General Patrick Ryder said. However, Ryder added that the Pentagon is monitoring the developments.